Hey, what's up everybody? It's your girl Shantae back with another episode of Chatting with Shantae. How in the world are y'all doing? Me, I am doing fabulous. So your girl is back again. Like I said, the last video, I know I've been gone for a minute, but now that things are coming to a good rest, I am back with the videos. And as y'all can see from the title, we are going to be talking about this week's episode of The Shy. It was a pretty chill episode. It was quite a few people we didn't see in this episode. So it was kind of like a filler episode, but it was still, you know, had some key moments in there so before i get into it if you haven't seen the episodes yet y'all know i don't do spoiler free so i would say pause this go watch the episode and then come back or if you don't care about spoiler free then keep on watching and if you already seen the episode then keep on watching so we can talk so i'm just go ahead and jump right into it so this won't be too too long but make sure you like comment subscribe hit the bell so you're notified when i drop a video get your snacks get your drinks prop your feet up and let's get it let's go so y'all know how i do it i take it character by character storyline by storyline just so it can flow easier so we're gonna go ahead and start with Keisha and Emmett because now we're this is where things are about to get real okay they were starting to get real but now that they have you know solidified what they are pretty much now it's about to get messy because we still have some more things to get through so we see Keisha and Emmett you know they're in the kitchen he's eating watching a little celibacy dude or whatever and Keisha's up in the kitchen whipping her up something to eat and I'm just like okay girl are you spending the night now is this a frequent thing like why are you not in your college dorm what's going on so we can pretty much determine that she's been spending the night and they've been getting real cozy and whatnot so he lets her know that he's having a game night with the OGs and I was like who's the OGs but we find that out later and she was like, well, I play cards. I know how to do my thing. So period, count me in. So they, you know, have fun about that. And the whole time while, you know, he's listening to the celibacy dude and things like that, he cannot keep his eyes off Keisha. So he's kind of like, ooh, I've been doing good with, you know, restraining from sex and just being, you know, irresponsible with my penis or whatever. But Keisha's here, she's looking good. She's looking comfortable in her little short shorts and crop top. And he's just like, cool. So the temptation is rising, not just on his end either, because we see a little, you know, tension coming from her end as well. So skipping over to Smokies, okay? So Emmett is working and we remember like when they were showing us the season trailer, how we saw Emmett was about to get held up. Well, this was the episode where that happened. And I think a lot of us can kind of determine who it was early on and it was of course was Bakari so he held the gun to Emmett's face wanting to rob him that shook Emmett up thank goodness Rashad was there to kind of defuse the situation we'll get back to that later when we get to you know him but of course Emmett is shaken up so he ends up going back home you know after work and he's visibly upset he's trying to get over what happened he's trying to process and just cool off and calm down so he tells Keisha what happens and she consoles him you know and it's like a real you can tell that they okay listen if you can hear my neighbor i'm so sorry it's saturday night child but anyway so you can tell that they really find peace and safe with safety with each other because he was just really holding on to her and she was just you know letting him have his moment and things like that so then she notices these two smokies bags and this is when me and keisha became one person she was like what is that he said it's food he was like don't y'all get tired of eating smokies i said keisha I want to high five you through the TV. I've been saying this since last season. I just know Smokey's ain't the only available restaurant. And I'm going to keep saying this. I don't care. I know it's like the common area, the common hangout spot. A lot of famous sitcoms have those spots. I get it. But at least in the other shows, they ate and hung out at other places too. Like Smokey's is the only joint. So his whole thing is, listen, it's Smokey's. It's free. I, what, we, what you want me to do? So she tells Emmett, you go calm your nerves. You're worked up. You go take you a nice hot shower. I'm going to whip up something to eat so that way your guests can have, you know, a good healthy meal. So he goes, takes his shower. And she's just up in the pots and pans, you know, whipping up something real nice. A good home-cooked meal. So he comes down after his shower with nothing but his towel on. Mm -hmm. And she's just like, oof, wait a minute, wait a minute. Like, I remember I remember that body, adi, adi. Yes, honey. So, you know, they're lingering on to each other. And then he goes and gets ready. So then the OGs come. And the OGs would be Trig, Rashad, and Darnell. And I was like, oh. <laughs> So they're having a good game night and I really love this scene just because it felt so 
familiar but it was like i know a lot of us have had you know these conversations before like you know sex and you know men versus women and stuff like that but then you know when it came to like the different generations and which era of music is the best is it the 80s is it the 90s i love that conversation it kind of made you feel like you were there because i found myself kind of you know talking back to the screen a little bit but it was really nice but the thing that kind of you know piqued interest to me was the fact that the guests, you know, Darnell, Trigg, and Shad, they could kind of sense that Keisha and Emmett still had feelings towards each other or something could possibly be going on. Of course, they don't know the depths of it, but they could tell that they still had that connection. At least Darnell could because he knows them more, but it was just, you know, interesting to see that. So they're having a good time and that was just a really good scene and things like that. So after they leave, uh, Keisha and Emmett, they're left by themselves and, you know, Emmett's expressing how happy he is you know the fact that him and his father have a really good relationship now because we know their relationship or lack thereof was very strained in the beginning and now you know they're over at each other's houses they're drinking they're playing cards they're you know confiding in one another i love that and this episode really highlighted at least to me highlighted different relationships like kind of strained relationships you know uh relationships that were like okay wait how did that happen or you know I don't know. I'll get to that in a second when I get to other characters. But I just love the focus on different relationships that, you know, have been formed thus far. So, you know, Keisha's happy for him. And she was like, you know, honor that, cherish that, because not everyone has, you know, that. So he consoles her and stuff like that. And then we got money long. I was and I was playing in the background. I said, Lord. So she's like, I can look at you for hours. Yeah, I was like, okay, Keisha, well, lay that on the table at this point. And Emma is like, I can look at you for the rest of my life. I said, here it come. Here it come. Now, maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just I have a drama bone in my body. Maybe I was just paranoid. But even before, it was just those two alone. When they were having the game night, I had this sense of, oh, my gosh, Tiffany is about to walk in at any moment. Like, either walk in because she still has a key or come knocking on the door and she sees Keisha there. Like, I just knew this was going to be the episode where Tiffany finds out what's been going on with Keisha and Emmett. And so when it didn't happen at the game night, I was like, okay, y'all are taking too long to get hot and spicy. If y'all going to do it, hurry up and do it. Okay, y'all are moving in slow motion. And I just knew Tiffany was about to walk in. In my mind, I was like, okay, Tiffany still has a key because she used to live here. She forgot to give it to Emmett or, you know, he forgot to get it from her. I don't know. She finna walk in and catch Keisha over there in the act with Emmett. It's finna be a blow up. But it didn't happen and they end up doing the do. But we see in the preview for the next episode, Keisha is like, okay, you know what we gotta do now. Now that we've done this, because at this point, they just been texting, you know, she's been over and whatnot. They kissed a couple of times. But now that they have done it, done it, oh, now they really gotta tell Tiffany. And so I want, I really wanna know, like do y'all think you know tiffany will have a right to be upset because i've seen a i'm in a discussion group on facebook and all types of opinions come on there on uh, on there child and so people are like you know tiffany shouldn't be mad i mean keisha did have him first and now that she she's the one who wanted the open marriage and she's moved on and moved in with some other dudes she really shouldn't be that mad but my thing is i think my main thing is just the whole girl code thing kind of um you know it's I don't want to say I keep saying it but it's just like it wouldn't hurt as bad or sting as bad if Keisha and Tiffany's dynamic didn't change like if they stayed where they were like really distant not really vibing with each other and stuff like that then it would be like okay well girl he was mine first but since they have like really formed a bond and a friendship and they look at each other as friends and they're going out together and they're doing this and that, it's like, dang, you know, Tiffany might be like, okay, and rightfully so as far as that goes, but it's like, or if Keisha was just some random girl or a new person who didn't have history, I think it's going to be the fact that, because listen, okay, so I can move on. I think it'll be sticky and kind of like, ugh, messy because... One, the dynamic of Tiffany and Keisha's relationship has changed, okay? Like, if, again, if they were enemies or still enemies or not vibing with each other, then okay. But also, if Keisha and Emmett didn't have history, period, because now it's like, and they were, okay, so if Keisha and Tiffany's relationship stayed where it was or whatever, and 
I don't know what I'm trying to say, but basically it's the fact that Keisha has history with Emmett. So it's kind of like, dang, you going back to your ex. Okay, you still wanted your ex after this whole time. And the fact that Keisha and Tiffany have formed a friendship. That's kind of where it's like, ooh. But other than that, Keisha, I mean, Tiffany, you've moved on. You want the open relationship, the open marriage. You moved in with Rob real quick. So it's like, do y'all think she would have a right to be upset? Or do you think she should just dust it off? Do y'all think she will even care? That's another, you know, angle it can go in. Do y'all think she will even care since she has fully kind of moved on with Rob, moved in with him, and she's the one who initiated the divorce and stuff like that? What do y'all think? So next we're going to talk about the kids. Um, I ain't got time to type out all the names. It says the kids. So Gemma tells Jake she's pregnant. That's where it starts off at. You know, last episode it ended with her telling Jake that they needed to talk. So she tells him that she's pregnant. He's like, so what are we going to do? And she's like, I'm going to take care of it. And he's like, huh? So basically, in the beginning of this, her whole thing was, I'm not trying to have a kid right now, so I'm going to do what I have to do, i.e. get an abortion. And Jake is kind of taken aback by this. And I actually like the switch, not switcheroo, because I know this is a common discussion held, you know, a lot of people. But in case scenarios, it's a lot of times we see the guy not wanting the girl to have the baby, like, you know, wanting her to get rid of the baby and stuff like that now we're seeing it from a young lady standpoint of i can't have a baby right now like no and we see the young man like so why don't you want to have my baby like we can we can do what we gotta do i will get three jobs if i have to that's what jake said he was like i will step up to the plate i will do anything i have to do like why don't you want to keep the baby so it was really interesting to see the direction they went with that so he ends up going to kevin's house just to you know tell him and i was like why is he going to kevin's house babe my mind forgot that quickly that oh yeah kevin and jimmy used to be a thing and so he goes over to kevin's house and he tells kevin that Gemma's pregnant that she is leaning towards getting an abortion and kevin's kind of like you know it is her body it is her decision however if you want her to keep this baby then you need to tell her that and at one point jake because you know kevin was kind of agreeing you know more so with uh Gemma than jake when he was talking about it's her body her choice and jake says something and he was like are you jealous and i was like Ugh dang don't do this don't don't do this and he was like you know me better than that and then they quickly you know dissolved that but i was like dang jay don't don't say that don't do that don't do that so that's that and maisha and Gemma, they end up going to like a college uh, you would think i would know what this is called because i've gone to them um but you know basically like not a college tour even though it could have been a college tour but basically you know they're prepping for college and stuff like that so maisha runs off she's having a good old time and Gemma is so wrapped up in her own thoughts she has a decision to make she has to consider her feelings jake's feelings she's at this college event we already know her feelings towards college she's not really feeling it she just has a whole bunch going on that she needs to make a decision on really quickly and side note that hillman grass sweatshirt my sis was wearing i want one those are really nice like lena hey but no those are really nice but anyway so Gemma and maisha they're in the bathroom they're talking and maisha's like you know girl you gotta do what you gotta do i mean do you really think everyone's questions are basically like you know do you really think you're ready to have a baby right now like you know you know and so Gemma tells maisha like hey i had a dream that i kept the baby and it was great and so that's kind of making me conflicted that's kind of making my mind go in different directions because in the beginning i was pretty sure you know of the direction i wanted to go with you know getting rid of the baby now that i've had this dream and I'm realizing that you know whatever decision I make it's no going back and so she's crying she's very emotional and this is another example of a relationship that we didn't see coming but I'm so glad it's here Maisha and Gemma really looking out for each other I mean that embrace they had in the bathroom and Maisha just really being there for her and in the last episode Gemma really being there for Maisha and, and you know encouraging her to go after her dreams and put herself out there I love I love that friendship this episode listen I ain't gonna lie to you this episode had me emotional I don't know why it's just I love connections I love unity so when I saw Maisha and Gemma just sharing that moment because you know in the beginning like season three they was not rocking with each other like because they are from two different sides of the track they not here for it and to see them you know become what they're becoming like a good set of girlfriends you know good friendship I absolutely 
love it so what else uh did i forget oh okay so then <laughs> crazy relationships again i'm trying to think of the word that not unfamiliar but that's what i'm looking for y'all anyway it'll come to me but anyway so papa and bakari i don't know how i feel about this friendship this buddy system that they have going on um <laughs> I, I don't know how i feel about it so papa and bakari they're hanging out and they're over at jake's house and i'll have to circle back to why bakari's over there but they're chilling and talking and smoking and stuff like that and jake comes home and he sees that bakari is there and the reason why, well, I'll just tell it now. The reason why Bakari is there is because after he held up Emmett at the Smokies joint, Rashad sat him down and was like, listen, you can stay here until you get on your feet. And we learned more about Bakari. And this was another storyline that had me very emotional because, you know, on just looking at it on hindsight, like it's like Bakari is a bad kid. He makes bad decisions, which he does, but I don't say he's a bad kid. It's like everyone like that. For the most part has a story and so in this episode we really got to learn more about bakari and where he is in his life and what's going on we you know we learned that he doesn't really have a stable place to stay he doesn't have any family and it's like wow you know there's a lot to this kid he's not just like some bully going around shooting people he has a story and rashad sees so much of himself in him and at one point while they were talking, Bakari was like, why do you care so much? Like, why are you asking me all these questions? Like, why do you care about my dreams? And, you know, if I'm good or not, like, why do you care so much? And Rashad told him, like, and he also said this to Trig as well in regards to Bakari. He was like, I wish I had someone who cared about me at your age, you know, at, when I was your age. Because he didn't have anybody. And that's how he went down the path that he did. Thankfully, he's back, you know, on track for the most part. But, you know... Rashad sees so much of himself in Bakari and he wants to stop him from going down a very dark path like darker than where he's already headed now he wants to try and prevent him from going down any further so that way he can get on the straight and narrow so that eventually leads up to Rashad saying hey you can stay here until you get you know situated and things like that so when Papa asked Bakari does Jake know you're staying here that's another thing I forgot child I was like why do Oh, I forgot Jake and Bakari hate each other. Every time they see each other, it's a fight. It's about to be a fight. They cannot stand one another. So I was like, oh, snap. I think it's because, you know, we're so wrapped up in Jake's storyline with Gemma and stuff like that. It's like, ooh, well, and sure enough, when Jake got home and saw Bakari on his couch, that it was going to be a fight, but it got broken up. So poor Jake, he has a whole bunch going on. His girl's pregnant and you know oh i forgot a couple things jake and Gemma did end up telling Gemma's dad that she's pregnant and he didn't blow up but he just really wants to you know he really wants Gemma to think about he i think he's kind of on the on the side of you know are you sure you want to have a baby like you know really think about this you know and this is when we see Gemma's mind kind of change she's like you know it's my body it's my decision and i think that I want to keep the baby. That's kind of what she's alluding to. And this is when Jake is like, listen, I'll do whatever I have to do to make sure I take care of the baby and Gemma. We're going to be good. So it's like, all right. But he still just wants her to think about it. And another thing, uh, Kevin and Simone are doing this little cosplay thing. Well, Simone was doing a cosplay thing and she wants Kevin to join him or excuse me, join her. And he's like, ah, that's not really my thing. Another relationship I think is just too cute. Kevin and Simone, the reason why I love it so much is because she's really introducing him to some new stuff that is so out of his comfort zone. But it's the fact that he likes her so much that he's willing to participate in it. No matter how corny or weird or uncomfortable it may be, he's willing to explore it and learn more about it. Like learn more about... Because in order to learn more about her, you have to learn the things that she likes and stuff like that. So he reluctantly agrees. And so when Kevin, I mean, excuse me, Jake came over and saw the costume he was trying to make, he was like, uh-uh, let me hook you up. So they go back over to, uh, wait, were they still over at Kevin's house? I don't know, but anyway, so Jake took a track suit, you know, a little matching set, and he painted little thunderbolts because Kevin said he wanted to make it rain. That would be his superpower. So he created little lightning bolts and stuff like that. And I was like, now, Jake, the way you whipped up this outfit, you could be making some money. The basketball thing ain't work, so it's okay, baby. But you got this baby on the way that both of y'all, I think, gonna keep, so this can be some good money for you the way you just ripped up this ivy park track suit and just here you go it's a costume 
Jake. <laughs> Jake, come on now. So hopefully we get to see him do something like that or just, you know, explore more things that he's really good at or not even explore. He may know that he's good at things, but actually pursue them. So that would be really good to see. And so at the cosplay event, since we're talking about it, uh, you know, they're having a good time, Simone and Kevin. She's introducing him to her friends and her world. Super cute. So this part cracked me up and it's because it reminded me so much of myself. So I guess it was like a little costume contest. So Simone just knew she was going to win the solo costume contest. She just knew knew she had it in the bag well the announcer says somebody else won another little girl won when i tell you simone said i was like simone we can see this the girl who won can see you she did not hide her facial expression at all she said i said that's me she is me so she's like kevin let's go because i ain't got time for this and then there was a couple's costume contest and kevin and simone won they got the little confetti raining down on them i said baby this is too cute i loved it okay so oh chill. this is what i wrote in my notes where is Lene? like i said there was quite a few people that we didn't see we didn't see any no one child nan baby we ain't see keisha's baby we ain't see ej we ain't see none of e uh emma's other little kids we ain't see uh jada we ain't see uh what's their name tiffany and rob we ain't see Lene, nina dre i said did everyone just pack up and just decide not to be on this episode i need all y'all at this point but anyway so now we're gonna go to trig fatima and shy so chill <laughs> tell me why they trying to lay low, not lay low, but not blow their cover or, you know, what was it? She said something. Caught slipping, that's what it was. She, they talking about not wanting to be caught slipping. And yet, you know, in the smack dab middle of the day, they're at a Mexican restaurant sipping margaritas. I'm like, well, Fatima and um, Trig, Victor, listen, it's... I gotta learn to call him Victor because now he's Victor. But it's like don't want to call him victor so trig victor so they're having a good conversation and whatnot and this is when things kind of got a little bit deep so we now know if we didn't know from the last episode fatima is a black trans woman right and she knows you know uh imani well, i don't know if she knows imani but she knows that trig victor and imani you know were together and knowing that imani is a trans black woman as well so the conversation about his sexual orientation or sexual preferences and things like that came into play and so her whole thing is you know if you love people like the people that you love shouldn't be kept a secret like you should be proud of that you should you know not hide that about yourself and so his whole thing is i feel you trust and believe me because i truly feel like you know trans women are women you know but do you think my supporters the people i'm trying to get votes from do you think they're going to be on the same page or do you think they're going to you know ostracize me like what do you really think if i'm trying to get into this uh, is he running for mayor what is he running for child <laughs> is it mayor i forgot he running for office child but regardless of what he's running for it's like you know if i need i need these people to be on my side if i'm going to get all the way in and so if i announce that i date trans black women or just trans women in general how would that look or how would it be received so she's like listen i understand you're kind of in a rough spot or whatever but listen if we're gonna do our thing i'm not gonna be kept a secret i said okay girl not getting caught slipping shell and it's crazy because it's like to the public you know, to the community, it's like Tierra and um, Trig Victor are a thing. They're an actual couple. I mean, at the press conference, she talking about some Victor is the love of my life. Girl, you don't even know his middle name. Anyway, so they're in his Jeep. They passing the blunt around. They talking. I'm like, what kind of discretion is this? Like, y'all, what do y'all, let's look up the word discreet. Let's pop it up. Like, what does discreet mean? Because y'all ain't in no back alleyway. Y'all is in somebody's neighborhood, child, passing the blunt. <laughs> passing a blunt then they end up kissing and i was like i just knew somebody from tmz or chicago mz was gonna pop out with the camera like got them i just knew it like y'all know when they do like the but from the behind shots of two people and then they separate and you just see somebody i just knew it was gonna be a reporter like so trig victor candidate for office here you go i just knew it i was like y'all just don't care on this show y'all just don't care child 
And again, it's not that he's technically cheating on Tierra, but if you are someone in the Chicago community seeing this person be with a woman, you know, such as Tierra or whatever, and then you look over and he in the Jeep kissing on Fatima, it's like, well, <laughs> Trig Victor, please. So, boom. Oh, another relationship. Listen, I told y'all this episode was all about relationships to me, but Rashad and uh, Deja. I, that, I don't even think I put this in my thing. But Rashad and Deja, I like this. The thing I love most about this is, one, Deja got it going on. She's like, listen, I can take care of myself. I got this, okay, period. But yeah, the thing I love most about Rashad and Deja's relationship, because we all know Rashad, you know, he just got out of prison and, you know, he's trying to get his life back on track and stuff like that. The way people treat people who have been locked up and stuff like that, and they're really actively trying to get back on their feet. It's a difference if someone was locked up and then they they get out and they just go back to their old habits. They're not trying to change. They're not trying to be better. Then it's like, okay. But when you have someone like Rashad who is really trying to be on the straight and narrow, he's really trying to do good for his community. He's helping his friend with his candidate candidacy and stuff like that and trying to get jobs and you know just all the other type of stuff it's really good to see him get love like romantic love and just love in general from in a genuine way you know in a system that or in a world that kind of looks down on inmates now listen if you did some messed up stuff to like children animals elderly and some other crooked stuff then okay we we give you a side eye but i don't remember what rashad did if they even mentioned it but it, either way he's out and trying to do good and the fact that someone like deja who told him listen i never thought i would see myself being with someone who is an inmate or, an, or excuse me or, um ex-con or anything like that but you changed my mind she's seeing way beneath the surface level because a lot of people just look at him as oh you were locked up you ain't gonna be nothing you might as well you know she's looking way past that and seeing the human i mean inmates are human but you know like the human side the emotional side she's seeing another side of him and not just letting the fact that he was locked up you know block her view of a good man i just love it okay and so i guess they were doing like a little self-care day and stuff like that and he was just like i ain't never had this before baby i am silky smart well what is this and she was like you deserve to be you know treated good you deserve this and he was like i do when he said i do i was like <laughs> listen this episode had me emotional child i was like yes you do you do oh my god I'm such a big emotional baby, child. Oh, but going back to Fatima and Shad, I mean, uh, Trick Victor for one second. Do y'all think we can trust Fatima? That was the question I wanted to ask in regards to them. Do y'all think we can trust? I mean, she hasn't shown us signs of being crooked or, you know, mischievous in any way. But at the same time, it's like, huh. Because, oh, I don't know. I don't want to say that she would out trick victor you know for liking trans women and being in relationships with them and stuff like that and getting the inside scoop i don't know i don't know i don't know i want to be thoroughly surprised but chow oh lord but chow yeah okay so what's next oh and then of course you know with the whole bakari staying at rashad and them's but well that was jake and uh trick victor's place so uh you know rashad says that bakari can stay but he needs to run it by trick victor just to make sure it's okay so trick victor gets home he's in a good mood because him and fatima was smooching on a blunt in the jeep and she i mean excuse me uh rashad lets uh trick victor know hey bakari's on the couch he's gonna be staying with us okay bye and me and uh trick victor have the same thing baby how is you gonna be offering people places to stay and you don't even pay rent here like, don't do that. So, of course, Trey Victor was against it at first because he knows Bakari can bring trouble. But he was like, okay, but if he do some stupid stuff, he up out of here, okay? He up out of here. But, again, Rashad really believes in him. And I like that because second chances is another thing as well, you know, with uh, Rashad and Bakari. Second chances and, you know, just really having someone pay attention to you and really care about you. I think that's another thing as well. There's, you know, having someone in your corner who truly can look past, you know, the surface level and the things that you've done, but really wants to get to know you and wants to help you the best way they can. I love it. And I love the fact that Bakari, he don't listen to nobody. He, I don't like that fact, but it's the fact that he don't listen to nobody. 
but when it comes to Rashad, he has this underlying sense of respect for him. And I like that. And I really hope that, you know, he really just trusts Rashad. I think he does. He's slowly but surely opening up to him. And dare I say, I really hope, since he's going to be staying there, we don't know how long, but since he's going to be staying there, and you know Jake lived there, we know they hate each other, but I hope that they are able to, I really hope they're able to, I ain't got, I'm not saying they got to be best friends, but I really hope they can come to like a mutual, you good, we cool, we straight. You know, I really hope we can do that. Okay, so lastly, child, we got Tracy, Rosalind, Q, and Duda. Tracy is over every single person that I just lined up, okay, that I just named. Tracy is over everybody. She is over Rosalind and her bob. She's over Q and his fedora with the feather hanging out. She's over Duda and the good loving he be giving her. Child, Chase, Tracy is over it, okay? Tracy is like, child, uh-uh, this ain't what the Rock Center is about. So she get up in there and everybody's up in her office waiting on her. So basically, Rosalind wants to, you know, gain allies from different people of the community, get votes, get endorsements, and blah, blah, blah. So, you know, they're talking about the police and the lack thereof and stuff like that. And Q and Duda are like, mm -hmm, yeah, we know we did that. And so Tracy's just looking like, ugh. Because she knows when it comes to Duda and Q, individually they cause havoc. But together, it's bound to be hell. That's how she's feeling. And then you got Rosalind in the mix trying to, you know control everything. Oh, baby, she's over it. So, Rosalind brings up the fact that there's been a number of uh, stolen packages being reported. And dude, I was like, is that what you called us over here for? Some Amazon packages getting stolen? Please get out of my face. I was like, dude, I'm with you. And so, um, what's her name? Rosalind is like, we need to be figuring out who is doing this and get to the bottom of it so that way the community community can see that we are, you know, we got their back, okay? I'm trying to make us look good. That's Roz's thing. I'm trying to make us look good. Even if it's all messed up, I'm trying to make us look good. So that way, people will want to donate to us and help us and stuff like that. So, you know, Duda and Q, they're like, we're going to get down to the bottom of it. So they get to this car garage type of situation. It's where, like, this little old... I guess illegal operation happens. I don't know. So it's some dudes there, they talking, and they just bust up in there. I'm like, y'all didn't hear the little sliding door slide up? Y'all didn't hear that? Y'all didn't? Okay, listen. Okay, y'all might have been deep in thought. Anyway, so they pop up, and they got guns all, all over the place, up in each other's face, like, who are you? What you doing here? And Q is like, cute. Anyway, come sit down. I said, sir, talk about some I'm the boogeyman. I said, you are. You are. So they're talking and whatnot, and things get kind of rough and rowdy and then this is when q hems up the main dude in charge and is like look i want 20 percent of this so that way i can keep your little underground operation on the hush hush but i still want some profits okay so you're gonna give me 20 percent and dude i was like y'all gonna make monthly or uh uh continuous donations to the rock center okay thank you so after they hem them up they leave and dude i was like what in the world is that that ain't what we came down here to do we ain't trying to get into business with these people like, what is he trying to do? And basically, Q was just telling everybody to shut up because he's in control. I was like, dude, I, you don't argue with nobody who's still rocking fedoras with the red feather sticking out. You don't argue with him. You don't. But Q told him, next time some craziness happens, I need you to be a little bit quicker with the trigger, baby, because, honey, I was like, Q, you have a fedora on with the red feather sticking out. No one is messing with you, sir. So they get back to the Rock Center to tell Tracy and them what happened. And Tracy is disgusted. She does not, not like the way all this is going down. And she doesn't really have much of a say-so just because the favors that she needed, those three are the ones who cater to those favors. So Q gets up. He leaves out like, yeah, I'm that dude. Roz is just looking at them like, y'all are weird but i'm gonna keep doing me so she leaves out and dude i was trying to reassure tracy listen i didn't have anything to do with what happened today okay i just wanted to make donations over here i did not want to get into anything crazy so tracy is like but you didn't do anything to stop him either because we're still in this situation so can i really trust you i mean at one point you were the love of my life you showed me a love that i never had before i was like tracy snap out of it okay otis Please smack her. Smack somebody. I, I, oh, child, Tracy. 
<laughs> Tracy, girl, you too pretty for this. You was too pretty to be hanging out with these hooligans. Tracy, what did I tell you? I told you to run. I told you to run. Does anyone, Lena, why didn't you make her run? I told y'all to make Tracy run. And now look at it, at the Rock Center, stressed. Because you got Q, Roslyn, and Duda just doing grimy stuff. It ain't my business. I'm just a viewer. Anyway, so she snatches away from Otis Duda and is like, I don't even know who you are anymore. Deuces. And that's the end of that. So, child, it's going to be a hot mess, okay? Doof. I hope Tracy don't get caught up in no stuff because y'all know I love Tracy. I do. Tracy just be dressed in cute, serving body and face and just side. Listen, Ty Davis. Listen, every episode, every review, I have to give a special shout out to Ty Davis just because she's that girl. But she's the queen of the... Like, listen, you have to pay attention. My good sis is the queen of just... I'm like, she is me. She want to be me so bad. Because, listen, I'm good for them eyes. <laughs> But let me get off here before I get to rambling. But I hope y'all enjoyed this review. I hope y'all enjoyed this episode if you watched it. And listen, how y'all liking the season so far now that we're, you know, at the halfway point? How are y'all liking this season, okay? And are y'all excited or interested to see how Tiffany's going to react to the whole Kim, Kimmy? Yep. <laughs> I saw that on one of the Facebook groups. And I was like, did she say Kermit? <laughs> I need to put my glasses on. But listen, Kimmy, that's what we're going to call him. Keisha and Emma, do y'all think Tiffany gonna be mad? Do y'all think we can trust Fatima when it comes to Trick Victor? I don't know just yet, okay? When it comes to Bakari and Papa, uh, I don't know, okay? I don't know. But anyway, I'm gonna get up off of here. I hope y'all enjoyed this review, and I will catch y'all on the next video. I love y'all. Bye! <laughs>